Let's open up Visual Studios Express 2013. File, create a new project, and do a web project, apps.net web application, call it whatever you want, hit OK. We're going to use the MVC template, which will check off MVC, and we can choose our user authentication. We're going to go with individual user account authentication for our websites which will allow us to use Facebook, Twitter, Google, or Microsoft or another provider to log in to our application through OpenID or Open Authentication. Hit OK. Our project is going to take a little while to load up and create itself. Now our project's loaded up. Just going to get rid of that start screen that pops up. We're going to go to our folder, our app start folder. In our app start folder, we have our startup.authentication.cs file. And today I'm going to show logging in with Google. So I'm just going to uncomment out this app.use Google authentication, which will allow us to use Google's Open ID authentication for users to sign into our website. If we go here to models, we go into the identity models.cs file, we will see the new identity user and application user is the default user for the default project. So application user derives from identity user which is part of the new identity store and user tables. So if we just drive into identity user, we can see that built into MVC5 are a bunch of user related tables. So you have your claims table, your logins table, your roles table, all, a whole bunch of tables that are just built in for you for user authentication. So we're gonna get out of there we're going to come back to, or I'll just save this, go back to identity models. So here's our default DB context that comes when we set up our project. It derives from identity DB context, which takes in an application user, which is an identity user that you can use the identity user in the new identity store that's built into MVC5. So we just go here, put a couple lines in there, and to expand on our current context, if we want to add more tables and add mapping, we'd want to add a uh, public or no private. Uh, let's do protected. Good. Override void on model creating. And so this is the typical stuff where you put your mapping for all your models into here and your on model creating. But something that tripped me up was that you gotta remember to put in the base dot on model creating and send the model builder down here because there's mapping for the identity tables that we use in our derived context and if we lose that mapping then we will run into some errors. So next thing we're going to want to do scroll up to our project we'll hit F4 get to our properties window will show down here since we're logging in with Google, Facebook, anything else you want to enable SSL so users information and password is not seen in plain text when sending it across the internet. So here is our SSL address instead of using the regular address by default. Let's go back into here. We would normally, when we run the project, it will run off localhost, some number, 
HTTP localhost some number. But now we want to be at HTTPS localhost some number. Usually it's 44300 by default, but that doesn't really matter. So we're going to right click, go to properties, and go to web. And so our project URL, when we start up, we want to paste in our HTTPS address. And then we want to create a virtual directory for it, yes. And then we can run our project. Our website's going to load up. It's going to be untrusted because our SSL ticket is not registered. So I understand the risks or whatever your browser might say. I'm going to confirm this uh, exception because it's just our website. It's totally fine. So here we are at the default s.net website. So we're going to register a user. So when a user registers, he goes in, puts in his username. Maybe it's Bob. And Bob is password. Confirms his password. He registers with our site. Uh, he doesn't want to remember his information right now. So it's going to load up. So say hello, Bob. Bob's now logged into our website. He can browse our web pages. And then, but Bob wants to also use his Google address. So Bob's going to go to hello, Bob to manage his account. And then all he has to do is hit Google to use another service to log in down here. Hit Google. If he's already signed in, he'll automatically sign him in. If he's not signed in, he's just put in his password, his email and his password here. So xxtest user at gmail.com. Sign in. It's going to ask him if he wants to accept this, accept this, to connect with the site. And now Bob can log in with his Gmail. He just did. He logged in as the same Bob. So he can either log in with his password he just made. Oops, I hit register. So, can't have two usernames, which is good. Well, two Bobs. So, Bob's going to log in. He can log back in using that, or he could log back in using his Google. He's going to log in with Google. Samari logged in with Google. I don't have to re log in, it just automatically logs Bob in. Go back to Visual Studio. So now I'm going to stop this application and go back to the identity model. So if you want to add anything else to user information, just put in there an application user or make a new class, whatever you want to do. And one of the things that tripped me up though was when I was mapping new classes with protected override void on model creating blah 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 I forgot to add base dot on model creating with model builder which will set up the identity tables and let's see what happens when we forget that so let's do enable dash migrations to enable migrations for our project And 
it's, it would it does allow you to enable migrations but it won't do a first migration so here's our migration configurations and it picks our only context that we have our application DB context so you don't have to specify your context if you only have one context by default we only have one so let's go back to our identity model notice that it says identity user login identity user role these are all the identity tables well some of them and it says they don't have IDs because they aren't mapped properly and they aren't mapped properly because we don't have base dot on model creating which maps all the base identity tables so we're going to want to remember to have that in there and if we hit save and then we hit add dash migration first now it should allow us to add a migration which it did, a scaffold of the migration and we just update our database, update dash database and of course our database is already set up with these tables so update dash database So let's just get rid of this migration because we don't need it. But if you were to do first migration, we do add dash migration uh, one, and then we're going to want to ignore changes. Now it'll just give us an initial blink migration, a blink starting point update that for our database. We'll already have all the user tables that are already in there when we first run our application here. So now when we want to do more migrations, we can add tables, rows, whatever, add a migration, update the database, and everything will work perfectly fine. And that's really all you have to do to set up the new user authentication in your application.